Welcome back, Quick Brain. Your question for today is, how do you live you know, in a state of where you are actually it's beyond happiness? And this is gonna be a great session because happiness is, um, I mean, why do we do what we do? And so to have the, this conversation, I have Jen Lim, who's been a friend of mine for over a decade. She's <laughs> co-founder and CEO of Delivering Happiness. Uh, which is a company she and Tony Shea, the late CEO of Zappos.com, co-founded to, uh, to champion science-based happiness, passion, and purpose at work. And she's also the author of the brand new book, Beyond Happiness, How Authentic Leaders Prioritize Purpose and People for Growth and Impact. Thanks for coming on, Jen. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I know that was a long subtitle there. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks for working through that. I, no, I appreciate it. This is such an important work right now because um, before we get started, I was wondering, like, has the pandemic, has it, has it changed um, how we approach happiness? Mm, yeah, I mean, I, the short answer is yes. Uh, I think I've had so many conversations now given, especially we've been in it, you know, a year and a half plus, um, and everyone has their pandemic story. Everyone has their, as I call it, like 2020 BC, before COVID and after COVID uh, stories. And they're also rich in terms of like what everyone had to go through. Um, and it was just this stark reality of, we knew that a pan pandemic could come. We knew that recession could come globally, uh, we knew there could be social unrest and inequalities and, and what that looks like in society. We just didn't know it was gonna come in the same year. It was basically, what does that mean for humanity and how, to, how we live um, being as connected as we are? So from that of my own personal experience and like having you know, worked on and researched this book, there's been definitely questioning of uh, what is happiness really anymore um, and the reframing within ourselves and self-reflection and the questions that you just pose, you know, like, why do we do what we do? Why do we wake up in the morning and feel amazing? Cause we have a sense of, you know, happiness or purpose meaningfully um, or we don't. And what are the things that we can do as human beings and help each other support uh, as we're still going through it right now. So just as context, I mentioned your co-founder of Delivering Happiness. Mm -hmm. what's, um, what's your mission, your work there? Yeah, so Delivering Happiness, uh, it was spawned from a book that, um, as mentioned, the late Tony Shea and I launched in 2010. Yeah, that's the OG. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it's been 11 years, but uh, so there we you know didn't know how the book was going to do, and lo and behold, there was a uh, a search for happiness in the world, um, both in work and outside of it. So the mission has been evolving since then, and we really wanted to focus on workplace happiness, um, knowing that a lot of examples in the book were about Zappos and Tony's own journey of understanding what he did there, what he learned along the way, and also um, principles around scientific happiness. So he and I connected on many different things but part of it was just because there's a science to happiness we're like what like this is something bigger than just zappos so the mission has been basically distilling all the lessons learned there um adding on scientific happiness levers and of of what we know to increase our happiness and and, and focus on what's right with us not just what's wrong with us and be able to create different frameworks and methods that companies and organizations and now governments and hospitals and all that have been able to take in um, and actually increase meaningful, sustainable happiness within their employees so that their customers or patients, citizens could be happier. And then you actually create a more sustainable and profitable, if that's what you're into, if you're a for-profit, and but the most important thing in that whole equation from happier employees to customers to more profit is you're creating more meaningful lives by instilling purpose and values and what that actually means inside and outside of work. 
so that's been the mission. Um, and yeah, now we're 11 years in. So it's been one of my, uh, I think, um, inspirations to see how it's worked in all these different places and really amazing that it's been regardless of geography, country, uh, industry, size of the company, to know that there is a universality of what scientific happiness can mean to essentially what can run a business in not just more profitable ways, but also more purposeful and you know prioritizing people all at the same time in, uh, in sort of a, a nice um, uh, equity around those things that we all care about, but all at the same time in equilibrium. So that's what we've been doing. It's amazing. Do you, do you have a working definition of happiness and subsequently beyond happiness? Yeah. So again, we base it on scientific concepts. Um, so there's uh, number one is uh, I'm going to be using layman's terms instead of this, like psychological things, psychological terms, but number one is just being true to yourself and having that sense of self-awareness of what's you know, going well, what's not going well, what are our strengths, but what are our blind spots that we can be courageous and brave enough to acknowledge that that's all part of who we are. So that level of being true and authentic um, and self-aware. And then the next two things come from a sense of, um, I would say, as we, we talked about in these books, uh, a sense of like pleasure, because we all love our pleasures, like that's can bring a more immediate form of happiness, whether it's like going out and, uh, you know, buying a new car or getting a raise or like, you know, hanging out with your buddies on a weekend on the golf course or in the park. Those are all meaningful in some ways, but they're kind of fleeting. Like you buy that, you get that, and then the high comes up really quick and then you hit that low. It's not a sustainable. So the third form is where the like more Aristotle talked about this and humanistic happiness, which is really drives back to the purpose. Um, what he said was happiness is uh, um, the reason for our existence. Uh, but most importantly, happiness is dependent on ourselves. And so extrapolating that and making more current is just like, what is really what we are doing now that is bigger than ourselves, that provides that sense of meaning that is more connected to the greater world and, and, and the, you know, the unknowns around it. Um, so it could be your family, number one, that's a big thing, but it could be a lot of different things that when we are self-aware and true to ourselves, driving into our strengths, acknowledging our weaknesses, what else can we bring within ourselves to the world and that kind of starts building a purpose statement of what's bigger than just ourselves. And in terms of beyond happiness, that that's part of the definition then? Yeah, it's part of it. I think that, so in Delivering Happiness, the, um, the book Tony Ann launched 2010, the build on that is that what we had, we had a conversation actually during the book tour, we did this cross country book tour and, and uh, to launch the book and, and spread the message. And what we had this uh, conversation about was like, you know, what we missed is that we didn't really drill down on the connection of the self as much because it was about Zappos, it was about organization and companies and businesses and all that. But the, the drill down on ourselves and being so real with that, I think that really got heightened and spotlight you know, the spotlight was put on that, especially after COVID and all that. So beyond is basically, I think we all have notions when we hear the word happiness, but going beyond it is that it's actually not understanding just our highs and what we can learn from that, but understanding our lows. And in those low moments that we all have had, not just in the last year and a half, but the lifespan of our lives, understanding what those lows mean like uh, so for me as an example my low was well, well prior to last year was when my dad passed away so the lows of that made me understand what my true values were because at that time I was like in the dot-com days I was like you know money title status was 
super high, but I didn't really feel meaning inside. My dad passed away, 9-11 happened, um, and I got fired from my job. And all these things happened in within one year. And it made me realize that I really wanted to take a step back and say, what did I learn from this? And forever from then, my purpose and value shifted to a much more meaningful place. So that's about people. It's about being having a sense of freedom and autonomy. And it's about being true to who I am, et cetera. Those are the values that I live by now. So beyond happiness, it's just taking what was defined before into a more current environment of the fact that, you know, someone, an Olympian can say, I'm not going to do this, Simone Biles, to say, I'm not going to do this because I'm not mentally feeling safe, psychologically safe, and I can hurt myself. And she can do that on a grand stage. And we're not Olympians, but we are in our own way because we are being our own self and people and, and trying to live our best life. So I think that especially in the last year and a half, has expanded that whole concept of what that could mean, of what is beyond like what we think about, like normally what happiness is, and make it more authentic in our conversations uh, within ourselves, with each other, in our interactions with our workplace, and of course, with our community and society at large. And I think that's what we all really need right now is that sense of honesty with each other. And ourselves. Yeah, it's interesting because I was going to ask you this question about why it's important and why is it important, like right needed right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it's uh, now more than ever. Like we have those different circumstances that we've all been presented with, and whether it's because we're a parent and we had to juggle working in Zoom land at the same time, like you know, homeschooling our child, that that. That's a different circumstance. We've all, I think, I think I can safely say this now. I don't think I could have said this a year and a half ago, but we've all lost someone, um, whether it's someone super close uh, in our lives or someone at work or someone, you know, uh, that we know to this pandemic or just because of a, a cause of something else. And so all these different things that are coming to us left and right, <laughs> looking at your backdrop, left and right, left brain, right brain. Like it's coming left and right. And it's coming in a way that I feel like the frequency has been accelerated. So it's been dialed up. The volume has been dialed up. The, the, the rate of uh, how we get hit gets dialed up and in most unexpected ways sometimes. Um, so for me, you know, just speaking very transparently, after the series of events of 2020, the most unexpected thing was Tony passing away for me. So that really caused me to, and I was supposed to be writing this book. He passed away the day after Thanksgiving and this book was supposed to be due like five weeks after. And so I was just like, how am I gonna be able to write this book? And luckily I have a like, you know, understanding publisher, but it just really forced these questions in a compressed way that I just, you know, really wanted to capture that everyone in the world is going through these things. And to paraphrase a quote is just, you know, be kind, be human, because everyone is going through their internal battle. We just don't know what that is. Um, and having that reflect in our society and the workplace and the simple ways of just saying, hey, you look like you're a little off today or you know, like you're kind of being like a, you know, a-hole or a bitch or whatever. I don't know if I can cuss on this <laughs> podcast, but, you know, whatever that word is, it's like, are you OK? Instead of assuming like, dang, this person is like totally like, you know, an a-hole. But going to that space of like, look, we've all gone through these emotions, especially in the year and a half, is um, why I think it's so important just to like flatten out those walls of what true communication and connection means. Because as human beings, like, you know, scientifically, socially, we need to be connected. It's like a modern day village. Uh, our workplaces are modern day villages. Our teams are villages. This whole world is a village in some ways. And if we choose to see it that way, then no matter where we are in our own lows, we can feel supported in a different way. You use this concept in the book about uh, greenhouses. Mm. So why, why is tending to greenhouses so important now? And can you relate it back to maybe what happened with Tony? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so 
Tony actually used to talk about greenhouses and like as a leader, he, he felt that as a leader, you want to build other others greenhouses and grow and nurture them, but you don't have to be the tallest tree or plant or whatever you're growing. Like the, the leader doesn't have to be like you want others to grow. And he said that like way many years ago. Um, so in my processing of this passing and and all that, I I just saw there was a connection there um, that, yes, this is true. As true leaders, we're here to grow others in their own greenhouses. But the reality is that so many of us, because we want to help, because we want to help grow other people, we forget about ourselves. It's like that, you know, the whole saying with the oxygen mask in, in the plane, like make sure you put it on first, even though it's so counterintuitive. And it's so hard to remember because not many of us are flying planes anymore. So it's a reminder that that is true, um, but it's so hard to execute and actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. So as I talk about in the book, it's like, yeah, Tony was an amazing, um, one of the best greenhouse builders in the world. And I think that in reflection, like he sometimes forgot about his own in, in, in ways that I think we can learn from because there's, um, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's sad to talk about it, but there's, there's something that he left in terms of what he wanted to try and grow. So that's why I really tried to distill that whole concept of, look, yes, as leaders, we grow greenhouses. Like we see, we love seeing things build and progress and make change in the world. But so often, and we forget about ourselves and what that really means. And that's where the honest talk is that I talked about earlier, like being true to our, not just like what, what we can celebrate, but also our shadow sides. And sometimes our inner you know, demons or resistance uh, within ourselves. So really just wanted to open that conversation up and be and to say it's okay. So what do you do when, when the pursuit of happiness, when we get derailed, something's going on at home, something's going on at work, mm -hmm. is there a way of getting back on the, on the path or is there a path to beyond happiness? Yeah, so uh, what I've I really wanted to instill in the book and what I've learned along the way from, um, well, basically like back in the days, uh, Zappos to delivering happiness and what I've seen, not only in the workplace, but society, is that if we as human beings, and this is where resilience comes in, but if we as human beings can actually ground ourselves in ha having that authentic real talk within ourselves, what are our true purposes? Maybe there's more than one, or maybe there's one. What is our true purpose? What are our true values? And actually, and it doesn't have to be this like huge, like lofty exercise. It can be really simple in naming those things for yourself. And just, you know, put on a piece of paper, write it on the wall, whatever it is that you can just remind yourself, this is who I am. And then that becomes like a snapshot of you, as individuals, us as individuals, no matter what swirls around, like we're in this you know, crazy sandstorm in the middle of you know Nevada, whatever, and yet we can ground ourselves as we see the things swirl around us, and we ground ourselves in those purpose and values, and it just works time and time again. Like your decision making, it becomes more clear. Asking yourself, what can I control of this circumstance? What can I not control of the circumstance and let it go? And then that's when we see that we can actually adapt to not just say, don't feel the emotions, feel the emotions, ask yourself these more logical questions of control and not control, and then actually create actions um, to do something. And then it becomes eventually behaviors um, and rituals within our lives. Yeah. I think a lot of these emotions, we feel them because these emotions are like signposts, signposts mm. to, to take some kind of action, you know, and, and part of living is just discovering, you know, who we are, and then also being that person, you know, that's willing to take the steps and walk the path. So in terms of when we're talking about beyond happiness, and we're talking mm. about leadership, prioritization, um, we're talking about things like, like purpose and people, you know, the, these are words that are that are more and more used, which I guess is a good thing, 
than it, than it was when you, you know, a decade ago. Where do you, um, where do you see purpose at work? Where do you think, see things moving towards? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're exactly right. Back then it was a novel idea. People are like, oh, that's cool for Zappos, but no, it never can happen for me. Even like from CLOs and frontliners, they would say the same thing. And that was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And so like, maybe that's been my battle cry for myself of just like, no, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> like you can actually have that for yourself. And, you know, uh, it's, it's been great to see the progress made on that. And in terms of where it's going to go from here, because it's becoming more household words, because it's becoming more boardroom, lunchroom words, and seeing it at the level of, you know, whether it's BlackRock CEO talking about it, like, this is how, you know, like, control, like, you know, like trillion dollars or billion dollars of like, oh, it's really about purpose. It's like, oh, that's interesting. And then to different CEOs of what we see with uh, Airbnb or Starbucks or whatever, to the small companies that we all love and, you know, want, want to be around and support. That is, I think the next, the, the next phase or turning point of all this is that it's not, it can't be just put on the wall or put in a PR release or, um, a press release or, you know, in some sort of social media post. It's cool to say it right now. And because, you know, there's a great resignation going on. There's a great awakening going on. People are just like quitting their jobs, even without, you know, 4 million people quit their jobs in April, even without a second choice. You know, they didn't even have anything lined up. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. But I think it's been a product of these last, you know, year and a half plus of, having the time to ask those questions. So I think the next step is actually um, doing something in a way that makes those words applicable, practical, and executable in our daily lives. And that like, as let's just say like senior leadership or CEOs, that's on our onus. If that's what we believe in and we're actually saying that, hey, what these are our purpose and values, how do you actually live that on a day-to-day -day basis? And how do you actually create the environment so people feel psychologically safe to live those values and walk that talk so that they can see you, oh, well, CEO is actually doing this or whoever my leader is. Um, and therefore I can feel safe and do that too. So I think that like I, you know, we've been big on the workplace type of you know, scientific happiness, but I think that just ripples down to our lives and then just creates a bigger impact because then therefore, people as individuals are being more true to that themselves, purpose and values, and living it on a day-to-day -day basis and impacting society in a different way. Yeah. And you actually illustrated with a wheel going from me to we and how it expands. <clears throat> who's who's the book for? For for our listeners. Um yeah, there's a I think I used the word leader. Um and I think you know like a lot of people are using that word too, but I use authentic leader. Um, so anyone that chooses to be authentic leader and you don't have to be that CEO, you don't have to be a manager. Um, like there's stories in the book about a guy that like does, like he cleans bathrooms in, in Mexico for uh, like a, a, a Cineplex mm -hmm. to a janitor, a custodian in Northwell hospitals in New York where they found purpose and they actually like live and breathe it. It's kind of like that, that JFK story of like, I don't even know if that's true. It might be folklore of asking the janitor, what do you do for a living or what do you do here? And he's like, I'm putting a man to the moon. Who knows if that's real? I know these stories are real, <laughs> that these people are saying like, this is, this is my purpose. And it's not because um, anything outside of like how I find meaning um, in providing that to others in, in a way that enrich, enriches their lives too and connects them. So to your question, I would say like anyone that wants to be an authentic leader can choose to be at work or in life. And so I think that's the audience. Amazing, amazing. Where can people get the book? I know a lot of our listeners, they want to, they, they want to champion science-based approaches to happiness, to, to purpose. Um, highly recommend everybody to our quick readers to be able to get their copy also as well. Um, should people go to Amazon or a website? 
Yeah, if um, you actually just launched it not too long ago, we just did a, a, a website to support the book, but basically it's just genlim.com. So J E N L I M.com. And you can, yeah, you, you'll find more information there. And if you choose to, like, you know, get the book, we have freebies of exercises. Like, so these concepts I ta- I'm talking about aren't so like, what? It's actually like very practical ways to say, okay, this is actually my purpose statement for now. These are my values. And you might be surprised um, if you go through those exercises to see where you are in life and take that snapshot for yourself. Yeah. Well, I want to take you, thank you so much for taking the time and putting your talent into creating this book. I highly recommend everybody gets their copy. They go to the website. I will put links in our show notes at jimquake.com forward slash notes. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel where they, we have the extended version of this interview. And uh, Jen Lim, thank you so much for being on our show again. Thank you, Jim. So good to be here. So good to see you. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody take a screenshot of this. Tag me in it. I'll actually gift a few copies to, to our listeners. And um, awesome. what, what's the best place to reach you on social media? Uh, at by Jen Lim. So at by Jen Lim. Perfect. All right. Thank you everybody for, for being on this uh, episode and we'll see you on our next show. Hi, quick brain. It's your brain coach. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Three things to do. Number one, make sure you share this because when you teach something, you get to learn it twice. Update your learning so you can update other people's learning as well. Number two, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing because if you miss a video, you miss a lot. And finally, make sure you hit that bell so you're notified and you find out when we put out the latest and the greatest. One extra thing, if you want really close attention, then text me. Here is my phone number, 310-299-9362. Did you remember that number? 310-299-9362. Shoot me a text and we'll stay in touch. Ask me your burning question. And I wish your days be full of lots of life, lots of love, lots of laughter, and always lots of learning. I'll see you in our next video.